What's up everybody? It's Kelsey Brianna J. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some products that I skipped in 2019. So I did this video last year and so many of you guys liked it that I'm bringing it back. So I want to talk about some of the things that I did not buy this year. And we all know that the beauty industry comes out with new products on a daily basis, sometimes on an hourly basis. So it is literally impossible for me to buy every single thing that comes out. But as a person who focuses their channel primarily on reviews, some tutorials, and then we have our other fun videos that I mix in, it's important to me to try to buy as much makeup as I possibly can that I think that you all would be interested in. However, your girl is not rich. So sometimes I have to step back and assess whether or not A, you all are going to watch it, or B, I personally want to have it in my collection. So I would be here all day long if I just talked about every single thing that I did not buy. So that's not what this video is. It's me talking about the things that I did not buy that you all may have thought that I would have bought. I want to talk to you guys about it and tell you my reasonings for why I did not buy these products. So let's go ahead and jump into it and let's talk about the products that I skipped in 2019. So let's start it off with talking about primers and the first product that I skipped is the Dior Face and Body Primer. And I was very intrigued by this primer because I'm a big fan of the Dior Face and Body Foundation. It came out last year. It's a beautiful foundation, but I'm like, do I need to get this primer to see what it's talking about? Can this primer enhance my application of this foundation? And these are questions that went through my mind, but ultimately I decided against getting the primer because I don't use primer. <laughs> so I was like, what am I going to do with yet another primer in my collection? And is this primer only going to work with this foundation? And if so, I don't wear that foundation that much, so then I won't use the primer that much. As much as I don't use that foundation, if I were to only be able to use this primer with that foundation, that means that I would use that primer twice as less because I don't always reach for primer just because I'm putting on foundation. So I figured I need to save my coins. I understand the importance of primer. I have primers that I know and love, but do I feel like it's necessary for me to get a flawless foundation application to wear primer? No. I don't so there we go I decided to skip it and I kind of stopped thinking about it after that so next let's move on to foundations so I only have two foundations because my favorite thing to try out is foundations it's very rare that I skip a foundation launch if it's a regular type foundation I really don't try that many BB creams I really don't try too many cushion foundations just because I know they don't have a color dark enough for me and there's a few other type formulations that I kind of just know that I'm not going to like so why waste my time with them but in regular Kelsey land I would have purchased these foundations and the first one is the Tom Ford Soleil Flawless Glow Foundation so, so many of you guys had asked me to do a review on this foundation and I was gearing up to purchase it. But what had happened was, was that whenever this foundation first launched, I went out of town. So I hate to have packages sit outside because I live in an apartment complex. So if I leave the package outside, then A, I run the risk of it getting stolen. And then B, even if they don't take the package, then now they know I'm not at home. So something worse can happen. So I try not to order stuff around the time when I'm about to leave. So I ended up not ordering that foundation. And then when I got back from being out of town, I feel like the hype kind of died down. So nobody else said anything else to me about it. As a beauty influencer, if you're not first, then you're last. Shout out to Ricky Bobby. So if you don't get your review up, then sometimes you're wasting money if you are one of the last ones to get it up because people are not going to watch because they already have formed an opinion. They've already seen 20 million videos on it. The next foundation that I skipped is the Stila Hide and Chic Fluid Foundation. So let me tell you why I skipped this foundation. It was because I was mad. Okay, so my Ulta had the display for this foundation up for two months before they got this foundation. I kid you not, two months. 
So I go into the beauty stores around me very regularly. The people in there know me, I'm a familiar face. I go in there and I see this display for this foundation. Mind you, this foundation has not been launched. It is not online yet. I just see the display. So I'm like, ooh, what is that? They're like, I don't know. The majority of them that I asked, they're like, I have no idea what that is. Is it not over there? I'm like, no, it's not. It's just a display. It's in their regular setup, but it just says hide and chic coming soon. So I'm like, okay, when is it coming? They don't know. I was like, okay. So I give them a minute. I'll let you get your stuff together. I'm not going to hound you too much because it's not really that pressing. So I come back the next week. I'm like, oh my gosh, is this still not up? You know, I'm doing my perusing around the store. They're like, no, um, we don't know what this is or when it's coming. I was like, mm, interesting. Cool. So this goes on where nobody knows anything for a month and a half. So now the images for the foundation have started to come out and, you know, it's getting a little bit more buzz, not a whole lot, but just a little bit more to where I at least know what this product is. So in my head, I was thinking, since it's now launched online, surely my Ulta has this foundation out at this point because they've had the display for it. They've been ready. It's time to get in the game now. So I go in there to see if they have this foundation. When I say the display was as blank as it was two months ago, and I asked them, I said, it's online. When are you all getting it? And I got one more I don't know. That set me over the edge. I was done with it. I didn't want to have the foundation. At that point, they can miss me with the foundation. Just, I don't want it. None of you all asked me for that foundation. It's just something that I saw. But at that point, I was so personally irritated by that foundation <laughs> i was like i don't want any parts to do with it at this point you can keep the whole foundation bye i don't want it how to sheet that i'm done with you done next is a concealer by natasha denona this one is called the trans fix concealer so i had intentions on buying this concealer when it came out but again, similar to the Tom Ford foundation situation, it came out when I was going out of town. I have a P.O. box. Sometimes I can order things to there, but sometimes stuff does not ship to P.O. boxes. So I think this is one of those things where it wouldn't ship to the P.O. box. But I was looking at it and then I thought about it. I really don't have the best track record with Natasha Denona complexion products in the first place. So her complexion products for me have never worked. I've tried two foundations. I believe I've tried a concealer from her before, but the foundation thing was pretty off-putting. So I really decided at that moment that I didn't really want to try it, especially since it said that it was a matte concealer. And I don't really think that I have any matte concealers in my collection that I care for too much. I personally am a person who likes to have a concealer that's a healthy mix between being something that's dewy and something that's a little bit more satin. Matte sounds like it's going to be dry. It sounds like it is going to make your under eye look crepey and look old. And I'm not going to be that girl. I want my under eye to look healthy and revitalized and just beautiful and just overall like I get enough hours of sleep a night. Sometimes if it's matte, I feel like it can make you look dehydrated. And plus with the other products that I've tried from her complexion line, I wasn't really like that thrilled. So I was like, mm, nah. Now let's move on to blushes. So the first blush that I skipped, and I'm going to tell you why I skipped it. It is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush 2019 Lunar New Year Edition. And 2019 was the year of the pig. I'm not very partial to pigs. They stink. They are very lazy and nasty animals. So it's not like I just really love a pig, you know. I never even liked Babe growing up. So I have no emotional connection to pigs. So to see that this year was the year of the pig... I was like, oh, and they made a blush to commemorate that. The design of the blush looked like ham. Oh my gosh, that grossed me out <laughs> so bad that I could not even get the blush. And people were going ham for this blush. <laughs> Literally, they were going ham for this blush. <laughs> This blush was sold out. They were trying to get their hands on this blush. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, why do you all want this? Like, lunch meat blush. Like, I could not get over the fact that I saw that it looks like ham. 
and it looks like deli meat. It looks like somebody's sandwich, and I just was not having it. I could not get over that fact. I did not care how pretty the color was. I don't care how it looked on my complexion because it looks like ham in the pan. I couldn't get into it. The next collection that I skipped that I really wanted to get, but I did not get it, is the, I don't know if it's M Cosmetics or is it EM Cosmetics, but they came out with Serum Blush. I didn't know whether or not I would like it, and I had never tried anything from the brand before. And you guys know I'm a makeup girl, so I like to wear makeup. Like, I love makeup. And I felt like the aesthetic of their brand was more so of a naturalista, Mother Earth. I don't really wear makeup. I just want a nice drop. I want it to look like somebody pinched my cheeks and I woke up. So I didn't know how that formula was going to look in conjunction with the rest of my makeup so with all that going back and forth i just decided to skip on it even though i am still interested in that blush formula which means that i do need to buy one because it has been a few months and it is still on my mind but i did skip it and i contemplated buying at least three of them and doing a video for you all but a lot of times, if a lot of stuff is coming out at one time and I know that other things are going to be more popular with you all, then I will prioritize and get those things over something else that I may have a personal interest in and then come back and revisit my personal interests later. So I think that that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try one. I want to see what it looks like. I want to see if it makes me glow. And I especially want to see how it works with my makeup. So next I have some highlighters that I skipped. Let's start off with talking about the Kaja Roller Glow Highlighter. Huh? Say when I come again? We're rolling highlighter on our face like paint. Like how you paint a wall. That's how you want to put some highlighter on my face. For real? That was my reaction to that. <laughs> I'm like, that is a conversation makeup piece if you've ever had one. I don't know anybody that actually tried it. But I saw it online and I was like... I don't know how I feel about that for highlights. Perhaps foundation, though. I would try that with some foundation. Because, you know, when you talk about foundation and all that stuff, it's like, oh, you're slathering it on. You're painting it on. Your face is painted. Let's see if we can paint it with the foundation. But for highlight, it's never that serious. That's doing a whole lot for some highlights. So next we have eyeshadow palettes. So with there being so many eyeshadow palettes, I have a greater variety and I'm able to skip more, but it doesn't seem like I skipped a lot because I still tried a lot. Trust me, I tried a lot of palettes this year. But one of the first ones that I skipped was the Bobbi Brown Kaleidoscope Palette. So I wanted this palette. I saw it. I thought it looks beautiful. It reminded me a lot of Linda Hallberg eyeshadows, which I'm a big fan of. It also reminded me a little bit of Pat McGrath eyeshadows and how they kind of look duochrome-y. They had their really nice, finely milled, it looks like it'll be a cream, but it's really a powder type formula. And I was going to get that palette until I saw that price tag. And something in me would not let me log in, put in my credit card information, and check out. It was just something about it. I was like, Bobby, but I'm not going to be able to keep entertaining this. Because at this point, Bobby, we have Pat, we have Natasha, we have Linda. Bobbi Brown's not really in that conversation. Now, Bobbi Brown makes a great eyeshadow formula, but do we look to Bobbi Brown for eyeshadow in 2019? Absolutely not. My train of thought was, Bobbi, do you think that you deserve all of our money? I know that that palette was upwards of $65 to $75, somewhere in there. I'm going to say no. Next, I almost got this one because of its shape alone. And that one is the Kaor palette. I really wanted to buy it because my name is Kelsey. And I know that a lot of you all know that my name is Kelsey, but there are a few people out there that think that my name is Brianna. That's my middle name, guys. My first name is Kelsey. So if you see me in the streets and you calling me Brianna, I might not turn around. If you call me Kelsey Brianna, I'll be like, huh? If you call me Kelsey Brianna J, I'll be like, what up? 
But if you call me Brianna, I'm not gonna think you're talking to me. And so this palette is shaped like a K. So I felt like I needed to have that for all of the K girls out there. It's a lot of us, strong army. But her name is Keisha, Keisha K or she's Gucci Mane's wife. And uh, I wanted to have it because of the shape. I was like, I know I would never use this palette. I probably would have gotten it and put it in the drawer by now. So I practiced restraint and I did not get it because I didn't really watch anybody's review on it. So I don't know how the formulation of the eyeshadows was. I don't see anybody else talking about that palette anymore. It just was the K thing. The next palette or quad I should say that I skipped is the Tom Ford White Suede Quad. And I skipped this based on the fact that I thought it was boring. I have other quads from Tom Ford that just get me going a little bit quicker than that one does. That one just looks like basic colors. It kind of looks dull, a little bit more muted. We all know that Tom Ford products are very expensive. So if I'm going to pay a premium price point, I need to get a palette or a quad that I am going to be using on a regular, and that one was not it. So the next palette that I skipped, that I almost bought, I had to go to the counter, swatch it, walk around and think about it, because I only really, at first, was gonna buy it for my channel. Then I looked at it and I'm like, do I need another warm tone palette? And I'm like, yes, I actually do. Because a lot of my warm tone palettes that I have in my collection are old. So sometimes it's okay to introduce similar products into your collection if you're updating them. This one is the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess Desert Heat Palette. So I was interested in it. It looks really good. But then when I got to the counter, I wasn't really that impressed with it. And I thought it looked so pretty on the pictures. And it's not like it was ugly in person. It just wasn't as pretty as it was on the pictures i felt a little catfished just a little bit so i walked around and i was like should i get this for my channel i was like nobody really cares nobody has asked me for this so i'm not gonna get it because it was expensive i don't know exactly how much it was but it was just a little bit palette and i knew that after the season i likely would never touch it again so i was like forget it okay so this last palette I really went back and forth with myself about this one because I did not know if you all wanted to see it, but I knew in my heart that I did not want to buy it. It was the Charlotte Tilbury Starry Eyes to Hypnotize palette. Okay, so I thought that this palette looked very basic and it was an essentials type palette. It had the colors that you need for every day very blase blah it's not going to excite me i probably would use it but do i feel like i needed it no i didn't and then i was thinking okay do you all want to see it on my channel should i get it because i know that a lot of you all enjoy charlotte tilbury products you want to see my reviews on them you want to know what i think about each and every one but i was looking at it and i just felt like it looked so similar to another product of hers that she came out with before and before that and before that and I've just seen it and it just looks like an infinity of the same colors being repeated and I just was so over it so I decided not to get it even though I went and I looked at it like three times but overall I fought that urge to get it because I only would be getting it to do a video and comparisons and all that stuff and like I've said, if you all don't ask me for stuff, to me, if it's not a super obvious product, then to me, it's not going to be on your radar. I know that you all always want to see Pat McGrath products. So it's like an automatic given. I'm getting Pat McGrath. I know that you all want to see Natasha Denona. But sometimes with Charlotte, if you all don't ask for it, I'm not going to get it. Brow products. So I thought that I was going to end up getting this. This is the Urban Decay Brow Blade Pencil. And I thought that many people would want to see me do a review on this. When I say it was radio silent from you all side, I heard not a word about this product. Nobody mentioned it. I don't even know if they still make it. That's how much I haven't heard anybody talk about it. So radio silence on your end, silence on my end. So I just figured nobody wants to see it, so why buy it? Next, we have some lipsticks that I see. Let's start off with the Milk Makeup Lipsticks. 
So they came up with these lipsticks and I'm looking for colors that I wanted to buy and then all of a sudden I forgot about it. It's just like it dropped off the face of the earth to me and I only just now remembered about those lipsticks when I was looking over all the products that came out in 2019 and I was looking at the prominent ones that I skipped is when I remembered, oh yeah, I wanted to buy some of those milk makeup lipsticks. They needed to push it in the marketing a little bit more because, honey, I totally forgot about those. Next is the Pat McGrath Blitz Trance Lipsticks. I was so over these type lipsticks in 2018. I gave it a chance from 2015 until 2017. And I've put it in lip combinations. I've worn metallic lipsticks just a little bit because seemingly it was slightly on trend. But like they said in Mean Girls, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not happening. The only people I know that like metallic lipsticks are people who were in high school in the 80s, meaning my mom and my aunt. They love metallic lipsticks. I, however, was in high school in the 2000s. So I just really never gravitated towards metallic lipsticks. I feel like it kind of looks dated unless you're doing a specific look. And even still then, companies, please stop making them. Like, I am done with them. I don't want to see it. I believe I said that last year, but yet here comes Auntie Pat hitting us with the sneak attack with the metallic lipsticks. Natasha. <laughs> Nobody is checking for no dang on liquid lipsticks in 2019, let alone metallic lipsticks. Sis, let that go. Liquid lipsticks are a thing of yesteryear. We all had a moment with it and then we all collectively woke up and said, dang, I'm tired of my lips bleeding and feeling chapped. I want to have some moisture. So give me the gloss. In 2019, we saw a resurgence of gloss being on trend, which made me so happy because for me, gloss never went out of trend. That is me all day, every day. I'm a girl about my gloss. I'm a girl about my hoops. But since it came back on trend, that only meant that we're going to get new formulas. And Natasha Denona, she did a good thing with her new lipsticks. But these metallic liquid lipsticks, it was like, did you forget to release those in 2016? Because in 2019, it's not wanted. So next I have a lip collection that I skipped. And this is by Alan Mar Cosmetics. And this is the Dez Nude Ass Glosses. I may have typed this wrong because I was typing this at 6 o'clock in the morning, you guys. That's what I've been doing. I've been prepping for these videos. But I skipped this collection because I had never purchased anything from this brand before. But they had new glosses. And I'm like, hmm. I'm like the little boy off of it when the clown came up from the sewer and he's like you want to play and the little boy was like sure that's me with new lip glosses I'm like hmm, hey so I was interested in them but I was kind of playing it safe because I knew that I was only going to be buying these for personal use I didn't plan on doing a video on these but then I saw Morgan Turner do a video on these and in her video she was talking about how the applicator was broken on hers and this wasn't just a her problem this was a massive issue that they had so I was like uh no the last thing I want to do is have a gloopy gloss that I have to kind of brush off on the side before I can use it and be glooping and glabbing and glopping gloss everywhere I have done that before and it is miserable because it gets everywhere you gotta have a tissue you put on too much lip gloss you're eating it it's on your teeth it's just a mess and as far as lip balm Pat McGrath came out with two new lip balms and they were like a bluish blackish color. These are called the Lip Fetish Lip Balm Noir and Astro Blue. And you all asked me if I was going to get that. I'm like, uh, no. Who wants to have black and blue chapstick? Like, what is that? 
when I saw that, I'm like, is that not gonna make my lips look like I'm frostbitten? Like I've just been outside. I don't want to look like that. It looks like it's gonna make me look like Jack from the Titanic. That is not my aesthetic at all. And I know that it's sort of translucent and it gives just a subtle hint, but I don't want a subtle hint of blue at all. So I know better, so I did better. I also skipped the Fenty Beauty Lip Scrub and Lip Balm. Not for any reason, but other than I just didn't feel like spending any more money at that time. And I still haven't gone back to look at it. It may be amazing, but I just didn't get it. So the following things that I skipped are all collections or either entire brands that I have skipped their launches or not picked up anything from them at all. So the first one is the Scott Barnes collection that just launched. I was totally out of the loop on that one. I did not know it was coming out. It just came out out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, have I not been on the internet? Like, I think that was during the week where I just wanted a break and I just didn't see it. By the time I realized what I was going on, everybody and their mama already had their video up. So I'm like, oh, well, they already did it. So I'm off the hook. So I didn't do it, nor did any of you all ask me about it, nor have any of you all still asked me about it. So... That was an easy skip. Next are all Chanel collections for 2019. I need Chanel to step their cookies up. And I'm a girl who grew up on Chanel makeup. I used to go to Chanel counters. I knew all the Chanel girls that worked there growing up. One of my first lip glosses in elementary school was a Chanel lip gloss. So I am more than familiar with the brands. And I am telling you all, as a girl who has been a diehard Chanel fan, both with accessories and with the makeup brands, that I have been bored to tears this year with the makeup. Every single collection that they have come out with has been a skip for me. Not only has it been a skip, it's been an easy skip. I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's it? And I know that Chanel is a very safe brand. They'll come out with things that may rock the boat like once every blue moon. But overall, there has been nothing, no hot fire, nothing to collect, nothing memorable from them all year. I am bored, Chanel. Please step it up. Give me something else. Show us who you are. Chanel used to be a little bit more edgy. They've never been the wild brand. That's not them because they cater to a certain demographic. But they also give you a little sum sum. Next is the Victoria Beckham collection. <sighs> that was real because A, I'm tired. And also, I'm tired of all these boring products. When I saw that line, I was like, is this the same thing that she already came out with with Estee Lauder? Oh, it's different? It's her own line? Oh, I didn't know. I couldn't tell the difference. They have been trying to push the same products for years. And they may be nice products. Who knows? But I wanted a little bit something else, a little bit something new. If you're going to branch off and do your own thing after collaborating with the same brand for years at least to make it distinguishable as to which one is which and i'm just not completely bored over the brand and this is coming from somebody where posh spice was my favorite spice girl so i know she has it in her she's the glam girl so bring the glamour posh next is a collection that was kind of hard for me to skip just because of nostalgia and the fact that i am such a huge lion king fan plus it has sir john who is one of beyonce's makeup artists spearheading this collection so i really was like do i want this and then he was making his rounds on social media with it but the thing that held me up from buying it was because it was through a brand that i had never heard of and from the feedback from you guys a lot of you all were telling me not to buy from the brand because the brand is unethical dang like the products were basic products so it was a neutral palette with the pop brown eyeliners brown brown like that but it looks kind of cute and i was considering it but the last thing that i want to do is spend a lot of money on a collection and then the majority of you all either a don't watch it or i get a whole bunch of people that hate watch it that come on there thumbs it down tell me they don't like it and then leave a whole bunch of comments calling me out of my name so i just kind of stayed away from it based on what i was hearing from you guys 
Plus, I was like, who is Luminesque? I had never even heard of this brand before. This collection had been through Urban Decay, who I think the collection should have been through, or even ColourPop, I would have gotten it. Next is a collection that I wanted to get. This one is the Estee Lauder X Duro collection, and Duro is an African designer that I was not familiar with until I saw this collection, but the pieces just looked Fun. The packaging was so beautiful. It was polka dotty. It was zigzag. It was just a whole bunch of differentness and it attracted me to it. But then when you open up the container, it was all basic colors that I already had. So one part of me wanted to buy it to support, but then the other part of me was like, I already have those type products. I don't have to financially support every single thing. I can support some things just by talking about it on my channel or supporting it by liking your posts on social media. I don't actually have to throw my money at every single thing that I want to support. There are other ways to do that. So me knowing that and looking at these products, I decided against it, even though this packaging is fire and I could have hooked them up with a bomb color story for this collection and made it to where it sold all the way out because I just was really inspired by the packaging, but then looking at the products, I was like, it's not, it's not matching. Next is a collection that I also wanted to have for the packaging, but I knew that the products were never going to be something that I would wear because they all just look so light. The MAC Electric Wonder Collection. This collection was so aesthetically pleasing, but all of the colors that came in the collection looked like ash so I decided to skip it because I already knew what it was going to be. And rather than waste my money on it, I already knew what it was. I knew what time it was. So I skipped it and I don't regret it. Next, I skipped the entire Tom Ford Soleil collection for summer 2019. And I got so many messages asking me if I was going to get the pieces from this collection. You all left comments. I responded back and I'm like, no. There is nothing from this collection that I don't already have from the other Summer So Late collections that Tom Ford has come out with. I don't think that a lot of people realize that Tom Ford is a brand that recycles products a lot. So I'm not new to Tom Ford. I feel like Tom Ford has gained a little bit more relevancy on social media in these past few years, but I have been buying Tom Ford products for longer than it's been popular on YouTube and Instagram. So some of the products that you might see that they're coming out with this year, there's been a variation of that two years ago that I still have that I haven't even used to like that. So I just don't feel like it's necessary to get something from all of his collections because pretty much all of the launches that they do, especially the summer collections, is going to have that white and gold packaging and it's always about summery, glowy, bronzy skin. Almost always. I've never seen them do anything else for summer. They may come out with a collection randomly throughout the year that's different, but for summer, they're pretty consistent with that. So I was like, no, no, no. And Tom Ford products start out at about $50 to $80 a pop. So I was like, uh, no. I went on a vacation instead. So the last thing that I skipped this year was the Moschino X Sephora collection. And I thought that this collection was so cute. I skipped it because it looked just like Supa's brand, the crayon case. And that is the entire premise of her brand. And I know that there are going to be overlapping ideas on certain things, but the similarity was undeniable to the point where I really was like, really? I know that Moschino is all about doing things like that taking objects that don't necessarily fit into the beauty space or the fashion space and then applying them there. And that is what they do. But there were certain instances where it was clear that they took things from her brand and they incorporated it into that collection. And because of that, I could not support that because Super is a girl out here getting it. She's from New Orleans. I just felt like if they did that to her, they could do that to me. So that's a lot. I did good, right? I skipped a lot of things this year and I'm going to do even better and skip even more stuff in 2020. I only want to get stuff that I personally want to have or if the majority of you all want to see it. Because if I invest a lot of money into products and brands and things that you all don't want to see, 
all that's doing is taking away from my resources that I can pull into doing something that you all do want to see. So it's important that you all let me know when I do my buy or buy videos, let me know. I ask you all to tell me if you want to see something or if you don't, and I mean it. Because like I say in those videos, I may say I'm not going to buy something, but if I get an overwhelming response from you all that you want to see it, I will change my mind. On the flip side, if I get an overwhelming response from you guys that you want to see me do a video on something, I need you to support and watch it. Because if I spend the time and spend the money doing that video and buying these things, then the best way for you all to support is to watch the video, watch the ads, use the links that I have in my description box, because that is what's going to keep this channel alive and well. So let me know what you all think about this down in the comments section. What products did you all resist the urge to get? Or what products did you all know that you absolutely were not going to buy in 2019? I look forward to reading what you all have to say. And I will catch you all in my very next video, which will be super, super soon. Smooches. Bye.